Good morning. Uh, welcome to Coffee with Ravi. Uh, today my post is about uh, degenerative cervical spondylosis. In other words, neck pain and degenerative disease of the spine as it relates to that. It's an interesting topic uh, to us both from a GI standpoint as I see some people who come in with neck related problems that impact the food pipe. But also it's a very common problem and I get lots of questions about it. It's a common problem because in some ways it's age related as we age some degeneration happens for example MRIs in people who are over the age of 50 uh, show that uh, there's some degeneration but not all degeneration causes symptoms. The main points I wanted to make on this slide as to the causes are how this happens if you look at the neck there are the uh, there's the spinal cord which you can think about as a a narrow a, a tube going up the spine, surrounded by the spine. The spine itself has uh, certain uh, uh, joints in it, uh, and sometimes they can be joint-related problems of the spine, or they can be disc-related problems of the spine, or sometimes they can be little bony outgrowths that can grow off the, uh, the spinous uh, processes called osteophytes. So any of these by different mechanisms. In other words, those bony processes or the disc getting softer or degenerating either because of injury, bad posture, or just natural process. The disc sometimes tends to degenerate and then the disc can actually go and press uh, on the spinal cord itself and cause some spinal cord type symptoms. So the, the mechanisms of pain can either be bone related or nerve root related or pressing on the spinal cord related and I'll try to relate these uh, to the symptoms as we talk. There are however some more worrisome signs and symptoms and if you have any of these, uh, these raise it to the next level. If there is history of cancer especially breast, prostate or lung or associated night sweats, weight loss uh, or pain at night those are things that need to uh, be uh, immediately looked at. In people who have history of IV drug abuse or who are immunocompromised or who have diabetes, sometimes there can be infections that develop in the neck area that cause symptoms, but usually there's severe pain associated with fever in those. So th that needs to be jumped on too if any of these associations are there. The other mechanism that we talked about is when the disc or some of these processes actually press on the spinal cord itself, which is a bundle of nerves, you can think about it in the middle. That can manifest as a change in how we walk or change in how we can hold things. So if you're, if you're dropping things in association with neck pain or we're walking funny, that's a, 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 a uh, a red flag by itself. So in other words, red flags are anything that has any of these conditions in the history of cancer, or if there's IV drugs, immunocompromised state, diabetes, or fever, uh, or any of uh, loss of grip or funny gait, or we're stumbling, those kind of things in association with neck pain, we need to kind of jump on it right away. So I think I covered the uh, symptoms. When you go in to uh, see um, a physician, they try to uh, elicit these by trying to flex the neck or put, turn the neck and push down or push up, trying to see, they're actually trying to see if the, those maneuvers put more pressure on the spinal cord or on the nerve roots, and uh, uh, they're looking for radiation of pain or tingling sensation, etc. As mentioned, myelopathy, is a condition where there is actual inflammation of the spinal cord and as I said there can be loss of strength or gait or balance issues with that. A set of initial x-rays can sometimes help if it can show the spinal cord out of uh, uh, whack uh, if that is uh, necessary in, in the realm of any of these other symptoms. MRIs are a good test sometimes uh, and by no means should we think that every person that has a neck pain should have an MRI but needs to be evaluated in light of these symptoms and physical exam. If there is none of these red flags or danger symptoms, uh, then pain control is the main uh, focus. Uh, sometimes taking oral pain medications or anti-inflammatory agents, sometimes injection of steroids right into that area is helpful. 
physical therapy or traction can be helpful. However, if there's any of these neurological signs, in other words, if you're able to not hold a cup or uh, we're walking funny, that means that the spinal cord or nerve roots are involved. Sometimes surgery can be uh, necessary. The goal of surgery is to take away the area that is pressing on the nerve and then stabilize the spine with rods, etc. So that's an entire different, uh, uh, deeper subject uh, that uh, we'll save for a later time. The main aspect is therefore in terms of prevention. Um, since some degree of degeneration is common to all of us as we age, the goal for us is to prevent further degeneration. Uh, being physically active is helpful. Maintaining good posture, neck posture and body posture is helpful so that over a period of time that degeneration doesn't affect the spine so that we're well balanced. Uh, smoking and obesity have been um, associated with spondylosis, so therefore managing these risk factors can be uh, helpful. So that's a, quite a bit of information, but I hope it's useful uh, and educates you and helps you think about this neck pain in a little different way. Uh, if you have further questions, feel free to always call us or be in touch with us. Thank you.